everybody. I'm Michelle Tennant Nicholson. I'm the Chief Creative Officer of Wasabi Publicity and the co-founder of PitchRate.com. And this is our Friday Calls at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern. So it's something new that we've been doing to support everybody in the 21 Day PR Action Guide Challenge. So hashtag 21 Day PR Action Guide. We started it in the pandemic as a way to support people um, who were trying to uh, give life into their businesses and so forth. So we're here. It's a very casual environment. You're going to hear people's backgrounds. Um, my assistant Hannah is going to be helping us out with putting things in the chat. Right now, for those of you um, who are here, go ahead and put in the chat um, some questions that you may have, where you're from, why you're here. Plug away. It's a PR call, so it's a way to practice plugging. We had a few questions um, in the pre-show, I guess you would call it, people just getting to know each other and logging on early, and I just love when that happens. Um, you know, what's the best way to actually prepare for these calls? And the best way is actually to work through this workbook. So June 1st through the first call, which was, um, let me get my calendar in front of me. So June 5th was our first call. Our second call was the 12th. Our third call is June 19th. And if you notice, it'll actually correspond with the table of contents here, right? So the first week was about creating your online press kit. The second week is about pitching. And the third week is really about out on the, you know, on the court, you know, actually dealing with the press. And so that's the best way to actually is just work through the workbook. And I'm going to talk about it today, about next month, because I've actually had some requests to continue. Another way that you can prepare is to be in part of the conversation in pitchrate.com. That'll give you practice to actually be with press. Okay, so let me show you what this is. It's a free media lead service uh, here. And some of you may know about us through this. So you'll see here that there's a lot of publicists, uh, experts. These might include authors or doctors or people who want to have publicity of some sort. And then we've also got our journalists and then we've got about 61 active requests. This is a free service and it connects uh, journalists with the expert or information officers, those who actually represent experts. Um, and you can see we've got lots of great press actually using this. So this is something that you can um, participate in and get our newsletters. And then that's, you'll see some of our feeds. We'll talk about these calls. And another place is at Wasabi, at the blog that I write. So you'll see that um, we have, you know, if you go to wasabipublicity.com and you go to all the way to the bottom, you'll see there's a click for the blog. And then Hannah, if you just grab this, you can put this in the chat too for people. But you can also just look to see, like yesterday I did this one, right? Want change, change the conversation. And this is from last week. And you can see where I, I, had the old calls put here. So this is the most current one. And I just want to go over this in case you missed it. So what we're talking about today is, you know, what's the conversation in the country is change. I believe the quickest way to uh, impact change is to change the conversation people are having. And everyone who works at Wasabi believes that as well. So you'll see here that I talk about this challenge I talk about my personal life and you see here that the other, the last two weeks are here. So let's say you're just joining us um, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm caught up. This is a great place to go to get caught up. Okay, um, Hannah, if you grab that blog link and put it in the chat too, that would be great for people. Today, we're really gonna be talking about the, san the interview prep and the soundbite delivery, okay? And then we're really gonna be asking these questions in our breakout session. The first call, we did not break out. I did more of a lecture style. In the second call, you'll see that there are quiet spaces. So when you see a quiet space, it's a time for you to, if you don't have someone to work with, you're watching this in the future, then it's time for you to work with your workbook or your journal. If, but the point of having a live call is so we can get each other's brilliance so that we have a sounding board with each other. So today we're gonna to be in the breakout session dealing with, so what will you be doing in your follow-up? With whom will you practice your interview and create your sound bites? And what will be your three anchors? And I'm gonna get into that. 
so that people are like, oh my God, I didn't read the blog. What is she talking about? I'll cover that. And then you can go back and watch and read this later. I also have in here an example of an interview that I did on Wednesday. So strangely enough, when we decided to do the 21 day PR action guide calls on Fridays, just as luck would have it, I happened to be fighting an asphalt plant 1100 yards, excuse me, 1100 feet from my house. And I live in a residential area. So it's the whole community is really up in arms about this. You'll see my, why do I have duct tape on my lapel? Well, this duct tape is a cheap way to start a conversation. It's a way to show solidarity. Uh, we've all seen campaigns like red ribbons and whatnot. This is the same sort of thing. And I invite you to give your campaign followers, like this is their cape, their superhero cape, right? So it shows a sign of solidarity. And, and of course, in a rural area, duct tape stands for sticking together, um, no tape on this mouth, sticky situation, that kind of thing. So that's when you see that, just know that, you know, how do you change an impact conversation? It's not just with the press, but it's also with people who are your audience of that press, the listeners, the readers, the viewers. So we're going to stop and let's see, make sure that I, I answered Linda's question about how to prepare for these calls. And then Janet also had a question about um, just being caught up. So let's just stop and make sure that I answered Linda and Janet's questions in the pre-show. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'm giving you a yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, great. Let's jump into where we are today. I see some new faces. I see some <laughs> friends who've been here the whole series. Either way, welcome. And I want to, if you're just now joining, make sure in the chat that you put in whatever you want to say, where your, your name, where you're from, your URL. Go ahead and just plug away what you want the rest of us to know about you. This is a way to share. You can also put your questions there. I was delighted to get questions this past week from our participants. So it really shows me that you're on the court and really engaging in PR. I also want to invite our, my fellow publicists on the line who are here to just really breathe new life into their PR campaigns. So let's talk about today and what we're actually going to uh, cover for today. So the, co the conversation, our follow-up do's and don'ts, um, how to best prepare for interviews, and the differences between print and broadcast and crafting sound bites that promote without over promoting. Now, you can go back in to the blog and watch all those examples I gave you, but let's just create right now what's before us about follow up. So, um, why don't we do our first breakout session, Hannah, so that we can get to know each other? And let's just do groups of two. And you have probably about two minutes each to share. I want you to talk about the current follow-up that you're doing with the press right now. Linda, a question before we break out? Yeah, Hannah, I just wanted to make sure you're aware that Remy Haygood's my business associate co-founder, so it'd probably be best to not pair us together because we already know each other. <laughs> we'll see if we can fit. It's if you can find that way to do that. Listen, if not, we can, we'll use it to catch up on the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's automated, so we'll do our best. Yeah, okay, okay. And if you're put together, see it as divine intervention. That's right. <laughs> All right, Hannah, let's go. You have the controls, Michelle, because you are host. Oh, that's right. Hold on. Let me, let me. So uh, you can switch that or however you want to do it. Let me, uh, let me share the controls. Hold on. Okay. All right. Now Hannah is in control. All right. Let's see. Break so helpful rooms. to not be my, in control. My whole life is controlled by women. <laughs> That's the way it should be, Mark. It's Lucky you. Yeah. I agree. I agree. You must have a very good life. Yeah. Oh, I love it. There was another man I saw in the room. I'm not sure where he went. Maybe he was scared. Oh, there he is. Okay. Wife, wife, wife daughters, publicist, everybody's, everybody's a woman. Oh, I'll get back to our brain <laughs> patterns. And why, you know, I have a master's degree in human development, and there's a reason why communications tends to, uh, it's female oriented or the way our brains are made is that reason because you Have guys are time. smart because you guys are smarter than us 
That's why. <laughs> no, we just, our brain actually has a connector you don't have. And that's why my husband goes, I'm not multitasking. Stop asking me to. So I'm like, okay. I think <laughs> we've, right. we've, we've, we've screwed up the up. world. And so, it, are you ready? It's your turn. <laughs> Here we go. It's so bye bye land. Everybody, see you in just a second. <laughs> Hit join. Breakout room five. Okay. Join breakout room. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Doc, or something like that. Hey. Everybody's coming back. Or a product or something like that. 
Adrian, you said send you an email. Can you put your email address in? Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going Thank to check you. right now. But we should, everybody, if everybody who wants to, should put their email address in the chat. Yeah, you can, you can save. You can I'm save. I'm going to put in the general chat, not just to Hannah then, okay? Yeah, and then because you can save the chats. <sighs> oh, people are hilarious. Okay. I had the pleasure of being in a breakout room with Mark. And uh, so. I did not, I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> Mark and I got to catch up. And so, it was on back, Mark. <clears throat> so we talked about something very important and I want you to now reflect on what you just said. And I want you to ask the question, did I make the press person or the person I'm following up with wrong? I don't understand what you're asking. Sure. So let's let's break that down just a bit. Mark, can we um, share yours with the group? Yes. You want, you want me to repeat what I told you? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to make sure that we were talking about the same thing. In particular, the email that you're going to send. So he has a former, he's working with a former DJ who uh, is in Detroit, number one DJ, and they just did audible uh, versions of his books, right? And his books have tie ins <clears throat> to Black Lives. Uh, Black Lives Matter and so forth. But the first thing he was going to say to his friend Lee, the DJ, is what, Mark? In his I haven't email. heard. I haven't heard anything from my emails. Boom. I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten a response. Oh. Boom. Michelle says, Michelle says that's a bad thing to do. You know that a hole hasn't written me back. This is so important. <laughs> that person you referred me to has not gone back to me. Well, I'm not arrogant enough to think that it's important to them. It's important to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem in our follow-up, everybody. Okay? You think that they care. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. Just let that sink in for a second. I know it's upsetting, right? I know it's upsetting that nobody cares about your book, about your show, about your charity, about, they don't care. It's so upsetting, you'll cry about it if you really get how important they don't care. Well, speaking as a journalist, I, I, I that's not completely true. Well, hold on, <laughs> let the pain fester for a second, Marjorie, before you let us out, <laughs> okay? I know where you're going, we're headed in the same way, okay. So they care about what they care about. They do care, but they care about what they care about. Even as a yeah. journalist, I could say that. And, and when they care. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. first of all, uh, so they don't care about, you know, about getting back to Mark on his time frame, right? But they are waiting for the next scoop. They are waiting for the next story. They are waiting to impress their bosses so that they can sell mm, papers and magazines and advertising for their podcast and to grow put food on their table right right that's my editor my editor always asks what's the hook yeah and so it's not the neck it's not the every year blue and gold cub scout banquet well that happens every year no we're not going to cover that <clears throat> but if there's something that's different oh. tell us what's different and just... you've got an in Hey, uh, we're going to do a tangent for just a quick second because you said blue and gold dinners for the Cub Scouts. Can I just tell you, I'm 50 now, but when I was in my 20s, I used to be a children's entertainer, swear to God. It's my theater <laughs> background. And my favorites were the blue and gold dinners for the Cub Scouts. And we would do like these theater games. Anyway, all oh, them sweeties. Okay. That's correct, right? So you've got to, you're calling in and you're, you're helping them with their job. So mm -hmm. when we think about Mark's follow-up, right? So how can Mark follow up to that email that he sent with Lee instead of saying, hey, I haven't heard back from the two people that you referred, what else could we say? Could you, could you send a piece of advice, some added information that adds to the story, say the story idea you previously sent? Beautiful. I, and that's from Drew. I remember that from Drew. Oh, good. I'll let him know that he actually said something that made a difference for another human being. It, it did. It did. <laughs> Good. How something how about something related to urgency? Urgency, right? Timeliness. Timeliness. Why yeah. now? 
right? Yeah. So a lot of clients go, I don't understand why they didn't, they didn't take my, they didn't take my pitch. I was like, well, you know, they, it just wasn't the right time for them. You know, we got to match up the right story with the right timing and so forth. So what could Mark say? So that's great, Janet. <clears throat> what else? So you're following up and you didn't hear back and you're like, dang it, I really want to hear back from this person. They're so important. So what's the first thing that we do? Flatter them. How do we flatter them, Joyce? Good. How do we get inside their world? Remember, and Mark, your little card that I promised you is in the mail. When you get it, I want you to remember that you are a VIP. So how Michelle, do we flatter? Michelle, how do we what if flatter I, what if, what if I, what if I made him the expert? What if I said something like, I sent these two emails. I hope you got your copies. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So okay. like, I'm still like, oh, you know, I get, I, I, I revert to being in I'm going back to my cereal. Sister Alfreda, when she would pull our earrings, you know, because we didn't do our homework, right? No. Can I didn't I, open up my emails on bad and wrong. Victoria, what could Mark say instead? Okay, I don't know, but I'm just taking a guess. What, I've, what I say for some of mine to get published is I'll say, uh, you were, I just want to quickly follow up because you were the first person I chose to publish this story, but please let me know because I have other people who are interested in publishing, but I want to give you the first, go, uh, the first opportunity to publish it. So please okay. let me know by Friday because I have people waiting. Okay, so, that, that's yeah, that's a little pressure. It's a little yeah. pressurized. It does work. It does piss people off, but that does work on occasion. <laughs> Good, but we can do something even better. What is it? How how about telling people um, that you understand how difficult their job is and that you think you have a story? You want to help them. All right. Do their job. They're like okay. Uh, you know, sometimes. Maybe, but then they're like, do I have, I don't have a hard job. Then they start to like evaluate what you just said. Okay. Those writers, those that are working journalists in the room or radio hosts, what would get your attention? Well, I might, maybe I'm to add. Off. Yeah, maybe I'm off, but <laughs> I do, it, it gets my attention if there's two things. They ask me for help and they know what I need so that for example, if I want uh, somebody to be an interview guest on my podcast and I've ignored them, and it does happen, I, I, I miss it because we have so many requests. Yeah. Very frequently, if somebody- I'd be happy, me, I'd be happy to. Yeah, okay. and, and ask me, you know, uh, they, they, they get my show and they're gonna say, you know, this has to do with aging and it's really a difficult um, type of guest to find. And we found this because we love your show. We heard it and we couldn't believe what you did with the other guy. Great. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I am so blown away with the work that you do mm -hmm. in the world. Adrian, you've made a difference for me. You're making a difference for the public at large. You're an amazing, amazing journalist. Thank you for doing your radio show. You're going to be like, Oh my God, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Nobody you can't say it like and not mean it. You have to actually reference their work. Yeah. Yeah. And because, you know, and it does happen. It doesn't happen a lot. You know, it's so funny. But if somebody does that with me and they ask me for help, I'll actually give them more help. Like, here's what I'm still looking for. Or I did, you know, I have a blog and I'm looking for that and I can't use this, but I'll put you in the blog. Yeah. Uh, if so if they you, tell me they if if I know they know my work and what my mission is. There was a guy I was pitching. Uh, our, we had a pandemic campaign. Did illegal poaching cause the pandemic? And I was trying to get this top international. I can't even remember if he was with the Daily Mail or the BBC or what it was. But I was trying to get his attention, and so I went to his Twitter feed. And right there in the Twitter feed is really interesting because you'll see that they have something quirky about themselves. And he happened to like French recipes. So I started with a French recipe. Yep. And he was yep. like, like the fact that I took time to know him and get to know him, he goes, mm -hmm. you made my day. Mm -hmm. I can't use your story, but you made my day. <laughs> Pitch me anytime you want. 
it's a no, he said, it's a no for now, but I got a pulse, you see? Mm -hmm. So yesterday, I also, uh, with this, with the asphalt plant example that you all are uh, blessed to hear about, but, you know, I'm living through as Aaron Brockovich. Um, it I got delayed. Say, it got I, delayed, I understand. It got delayed. Yeah, thank I heard you, that. Thank you, Mark, for paying attention to my I life. paid attention. Well, I, uh, Drew sent, Drew sent an email. You're going to get a return email from me. I got one from <laughs> <So>. Drew. <laughs> you guys live together or something? No, he's in Budapest. No, I'm in the Smoky <laughs> Mountains. No. Oh, my God, please. I don't ever want to live with him again. We did for like a brief like stint when we started our company just to save money. It was horrible. All right. Don't want to take two 30-year-olds and put them together. You know what I mean? Got it. Anyway. So, Ment um, mentally, you mean? So one of the things, that, well, he's just a little messier than I'm. I'm very fastidious. I like my stuff, you know, as you can imagine, a little bit of a control freak. So um, one of the things I said yesterday to an editor was, I'd let, I'm not going to say what the scoop is because I have to keep that private because I don't actually want to say publicly what I did. Um, but I called his voicemail and I said, I want to reward you for all the coverage you've done for me lately. I've got a scoop for you. And I read him a letter that had been sent to me privately. It's front page this morning. Mm, nice. Didn't have to disclose who gave it to him. Right, because on the letter it had two phone numbers that I just I just read off the, but you know, anytime I call now he's gonna be like, <laughs> you know, what do you got? What do you got? Right. So that's the kind of relationship you want in follow up. Okay. So next next job. Okay. How to prepare for interviews. So you've got the interview. You followed up, and they say Adrian says, Mark, you're on. <gasps> How do you prepare for that interview? All right, we're gonna break into session. I want you to, first of all, there's two points to this uh, breakout. One, how do you prepare for interviews in your life? And then also the differences between broadcast and print. We're gonna talk about that in this session, okay? And then we're gonna come back together. Five minutes. Five minutes, oh my. <clears throat> We're gonna we're gonna go to bye bye land in here just a second when Hannah uh, breaks this up. It always feels so weird. <laughs> bye you all. Come back later.
today. Elizabeth had done that one session that we did years ago, Hannah. Remember we did a series of like seven series because we know her through Matthew James. Yeah. And who knows oh. neurolinguistic programming. And marketing. Goes way back with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Hello. Hello. There's Linda, also a friend for years. We served on a board together with Whitewater uh, Kayaking, Whitewater where I met Michelle. What a connection. <gasps> Hi, everybody. Is everybody back, Hannah? I can't tell, but I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, so let's talk about this, okay? So a lot of time, I'm going to give you the example from my life from the asphalt plant, which is in the blog. You would think as a publicist with 30 years experience, I'm just good to go with an interview, whether it's print or broadcast. Would you raise your, I can see most of you, except for the three that are on, not on screen. That's fine. You don't have to be on screen, but just raise your hand if you think that I'm good to go for any interview or keep your hand down if you think uh, that I, I'm not good to go. Okay. I think, I think you're good to go. Good, good to, to go, go anytime. Well, Richard talked about Richard, who you all see as Moto Z3. Richard was like, he had a, he got off of a plane one time and related to a hurricane, they just shoved them uh the TV anchor just, or the producer just shoved a microphone in his mouth and he had to mm -hmm. talk. Okay. And then he had a print interview that was three pages long. And then Elizabeth was telling me, um, you know, that she's never been interviewed, which to me is shocking. I know what Elizabeth does. She's a speech therapist and has so many different things that the, when I hear something like that with the skill set like Elizabeth has, the only thing that's missing is that the press in your area knows what you can talk about. That's, you just need to connect the dots for them and they will, write, they will interview you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now back to the differences of print and online prep or print and broadcast prep. Um, yes, yeah, so broadcast is quick, it's time bound, whereas print is usually like either on the phone or written in an email mm -hmm. style, which you have a little more time thoughtfulness. Some of the larger corporations that we work with will tell me, we're not doing the interview unless they send it via email, right? So you kind of like, and then of course it's a yeah. bummer for the journalists and all this stuff. It's but whatever, for everybody. When, you're, when you're speaking to a journalist, everything is on the record. You know that thing in the movies where they go, this is off the record. It is not off the record, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I want you to start thinking about your everyday conversations as practice. Mm -hmm. Also in your emails, right? So you're constantly practicing. Somebody just wrote, they're doing their elevator pitch. Exactly. You go to a party, you go here, you go anywhere. Um, my husband jokes when we first started dating, because I've been a publicist for a while, but then he started dating a publicist. So it was new for him. So we're about to go to a party and I'm like, okay, just so you're clear, Okay, we need to get straight about what you're going to say about me waiting tables. And he goes, what? <laughs> you know, because I it was like, I just started the PR firm. I had one big client and we were just starting out and I was paying my student loans with my waiting tables. You know, mm -hmm. it's like 2002. And he goes, nobody, why would you? I said, no, because it doesn't look successful, right? And you fake it till you make it. And so mm -hmm. you can't say that I'm waiting tables at the, the restaurant has long since closed or whatever. Right. Yeah. And uh, they had great croissants though. And like the salad with this honey dressing that was fantastic. Anyway, oh, those <laughs> croissants. I'm just like, thinking about those croissants with the honey on the top. <laughs> anyway, um, I said, you can't, I said, because Jeff, our friend Jeff, Jeff is well connected and he could get me a lot of clients. And so if you tell him that I'm waiting the tables, he's going to think that I'm a shit publicist. And he goes, and I said, I'm soundbiting you. And if you want to continue to date me, you will listen to me. <laughs> and he like, like now, right? We've been together since 2002. We're married, married since 2006. So we'll, about, we'll get ready to go to a party and I'll start to do that with him. So they'll quit soundbiting me. <laughs> but it's important, right? And then other times, like around this asphalt plant, he's like, what should I say? <laughs> It's the same. It's just like, what should I, you really want that short period of time, most impact. And so in this case with the asphalt plant, the radio interview that's in that blog, 
I had 12 minutes. That's a long radio interview on a morning show. It was long. I had to call my lawyer, the lawyer that now represents the whole community. There's 3,000 of us. And I said to him, what do you need me to say? Mm -hmm. And he said, one, two, three. That would forward his legal strategy. So in this case, I say what the lawyer wants. I don't say what I want to say. I say what mm -hmm. the lawyer wants me to say. I agree. Yeah, well, of course you would, Mark. You've got a lawyer in the mix. I'm surprised, so, <laughs> she, I'm, I'm surprised she didn't want to appear on the show with you. No. He did do another interview, though. Okay. Right? And so this is something. So then what does that mean for the rest of us? You always have to go back to your why. Remember day one. Day one was why are you doing this? So what's your call to action? What do you want from the public? Do you want them to buy a book? Do you want them to tune in? Do you want them to donate for a charity? Do you want them, like, what do you want them to do? And that's usually missing for people. So all your, all your sound bites, when you prepare, and for broadcast, you just have to practice. I love to say, practice with a f uh, fifth grader. Now, you know, why would I say that? Who knows why? <laughs> because they're so honest. Thank you. <laughs> and plain communication. Yeah, simple yeah. communication yeah. honesty. Do most keeping people, it simple. Yeah. Do most people in this, on this call have access to community cable stations, cable TV stations? I don't know, do you all? Yes. Because right. that's, uh, that's a free community resource that is, is huge in being able to give you an opportunity to practice whether interviewing or getting interviewed, um, and they're all, at least from having produced my own at times, it's hard to get people to agree to be on TV. So if you're willing to do that, understanding it's got a really small audience, but it's a, it's a place to get started. And you may get sucked into doing all sorts of things with them, but it's, it's a stepping stone. And okay. there, and right so, now people are like, well, what, what is that? What does that mean? So the most famous example of what she's talking about is Wayne's World. Party on. Garth, does everybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, like, <laughs> right what's the connection? How do you get the connection? They were, they had a cable show. Oh, right, 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 right. They had a cable show uh, okay. that was, they, they got, circuit, they got, yeah, yeah. See, there they are on their uh -huh. little show. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's the. If you yeah. <laughs> that was like the first Zoom video. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was my <laughs> perfect. Um, and you know, it's the pandemic, and how do you practice? Just uh, you know, if you have a child in your life, that just let them play Oprah with you, and then it'll really, and then record it, and see how you do, and then tweak mm -hmm. from there. And of course, we're going to have these Friday calls for you as well, right? Now. Um, the main difference is, is timing, right? So if you're in a broadcast situation, you also have to, how do you sound? Can you make sure that the background noise? In Richard's case, he had no, you know, no uh, warning that he was gonna, he just had a microphone shoved in his face. And when you're on site and there's a camera crew around you, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. And it, some kind, it sometimes can be very daunting. So just be ready. I remember one time we did, uh, Wasabi represented SOS Children's Villages, a global nonprofit, and we were doing a tea party with the Duchess of York in uh, New York at the time at the Waldorf Astoria. And the crew came in and they started to ask questions about the royal family versus the tea party. And so the Duchess of York like took off so she wouldn't have to, you know, the paparazzi after her. And then they turned to me and they stuck the microphone in my face, right? And then I, <laughs> I said whatever, I segued into the nonprofit, you know, sound <laughs> quickly. They didn't get used, but I was at least ready to not, um, not actually answer the scuttlebutt that was happening with the royal family at the time, right? So, and then print, you know, just make sure somebody proves your stuff because a lot of times people are shocked at, like, oh my God, they printed my typo. Yeah, that happens today. They're on a very tight, and sometimes that happens. So make sure it's proofed. Let's talk about yeah. your sound bites. How do you promote without over promoting? So we're gonna, this is our last breakout session. And then when we come back, we'll end powerfully. I wanna know Michelle, what difference this has made for you. Michelle? Yes, Mark? Before, before you do that, I, I wanna share what I was discussing with Linda. Okay. Uh, 
two things. Um, number one, if you're if if the topic is something you're well versed in, I don't know that that you need ter- a tremendous amount of preparation. But I mean, it, as a lawyer, if you specialize in one area, you might be asked a question about another area. So you might want to find out what the context of the conversation is going to be. Um, if it's if it's about a topic you don't understand, you might want to research that topic. But the other thing that I think is important is who's doing the interview. Uh, mm-hmm. And I shared, I shared with Linda a story from my very young days. Uh, I've been practicing law for 43 years. And in my second or third year, I ran an ad for my service. And U.S. News and World Report. Is it like picked, Better Call Saul? It was something like that. But U.S., that, that's the fun, that's, you know, it's funny that you say that because that's what, exactly what the story's about. Um, okay. Uh, U.S. News and World Report sees my ad somehow, I don't know, uh-huh. and, I get a, and I get a phone call, would you be willing to talk about lawyer advertising? And I'm going, U.S. News and World Report, wow, I'm going to be, I'm going to be famous. So, <laughs> very funny. So, so I, um, so I agree to the interview, and they ask me, do I think lawyers ought to be advertising on in print or on television and i said we sell a product or service just like a hardware store sells a can of paint why not they put the interview in the magazine under the category here come the hucksters so my point is find out who's interviewing you and what the purpose of the interview is always they can still just twist it if they really i I understand but i mean at least at least at least do a make an effort uh, Tracy and I also just said, uh, be, it, be willing to say no if you don't know the answer. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and true. you can also answer in a way, like my example with the Duchess of York, you know, uh, you see politicians doing it every single day. They answer the question without answering the question. They go back to their sound bites. I'm not recommending that. I do believe in honest communication and having authentic interaction with the press. And there are times that the press is not friendly for you. And they might they might actually try to snare you into something, mm-hmm. um, but that but those are rare those are more rare cases what Mark's talking about and that's mm-hmm. when you start to get into some um, crisis PR things of that nature. I don't from what you all have told me the only the only people in this group that might be dealing with that might be Nita, right? Because she's dealing with climate change issues. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, let's. I want to raise up a topic there because this is something that was fresh on um, our conversations recently, uh, Remy and I, because um, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, and she was contacted after submitting a request to be added to a Black-owned women's business list um, that was being circulated by our local newspaper. Um, they reached out to her and, well, one person reached out to another and to another and she got a contact um, to be interviewed. And I think the important question is, what's the, what's the context of the story that you're wanting to do? And they didn't ever give her an answer. So, um, you know, I think that you kind of want to know that right up yep. front. Uh, I asked what the is, question, Linda, the question that I ask is, what's your working title? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your working title? Okay. In interest of time, because we'll, we're about 10 minutes from the top of the hour, and I, I am committed that this be always under an hour. Let's move into the breakout session just to remind you what we're talking about is crafting sound bites, promoting without over promoting. Go ahead. Let's break into session. Okay. Mm.
Hi, Hannah. <laughs> You're always first back. <laughs> I am. Well, it's so funny um, because in our breakout session, Cornelia, her voice, she couldn't, um, I couldn't hear or see her and I can't now either. So she texted me what she had to say and I could oh. talk to her and she could hear me, but, um, oh, she doesn't have a mic. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any controls for Cornelia. Yeah. That's why. Uh huh. So, um, okay. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta finish what I was saying to uh, my my share partner. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Thanks. A little gift for me to yell. Okay. All right. How was that? So how do you promote without promoting? Who knows the answer? You probably know if you've been working the workbook and if you haven't been working the workbook, who cares? You're going to find out now. Mm -hmm. How do you, you promote without ever promoting? You probably show your credibility and your authority in the issue. Uh, you've got to like get in there and tell them who's boss. Maybe. <laughs> who else? I think talk about benefits. Benefit. This is why you need to know it because this is gonna it's how it's gonna benefit you, maybe. I talk to get about partners. Yeah, I, I talk about partners that I that that could also be helpful to people. All right. That I that I work with and okay. that name dropping. It's about well, sure. It's about being helpful right. and not making it just about me. Okay. Community Janet, did you have, hold on, hold on. Janet wanted to get her, get her voice out. Janet, did you get there it all she out? Is. There she is. I see her. Me? Yeah. Oh, I, no, I already spoke. I said, speak about the benefits to the end user. Benefits to the end user. Good. Okay. Well, who else? Uh, I, Richard, you wanted to share, Richard? I see a light coming on for oh. Richard, but I don't hear Richard. Okay, there it is. Yeah, I was trying to hit, because I'm using the phone today, so it's kind of like, different um yeah basically saying information what the people were saying about that just saying exactly that the benefit yeah. the benefits really so these are all great answers okay but it's not um the answer that i'm going to coach you to have oh, okay. this is where my 30 years of experience comes into play for you I want you to consider something we are social beings and, uh, and, and also as adults, we don't all, this is where my adult learning theory stuff comes in. When you start to, I want you to consider in the brain development, when you tell me what to do, you make me wrong, you give me information, I feel whatever, the punishment side of my brain lights up. For you as the gift giver, your reward center lights up. So one of the things that you don't want to have happen when you're on an interview is for your audience to have their punishment side of their brain light up. Unless you're trying to do fear-based marketing, which we're trying to elevate the conversation of that. What I want you to try instead is stories. We are all forever changed by a story. You know that feeling you're around a campfire or around a family dinner table and then somebody goes, once upon a time, and we all light up like, I want to hear, I want to know, I want to, I want to know what happens to the little girl or the little boy or the little doggy or in right. And our whole brain like ignites in a different way. It's fine to talk about the tips and the myths and the name dropping and yeah, credibility and all that's important. All that information is important. But what sets exceptional from average is storytelling. Okay. Okay. So that's the big thing. So to promote without promoting is what I say to people is, do you ever hear an interview and then they go in my book on page 36 and you're like, oh, right. Oh, now I have to go buy their book. Right. Give them a give, give them a gift. And here's how you do it. Um, so I teach, you know, some of the people that we work with are uh, motivational speakers. Okay. And they do seminars. And so they want to promote their seminar to actually come to the seminar. So what they say, so they're asked a question and rather than saying something about the seminar, when they're asked a question about what do you think about black lives matter, 
blah, blah, or whatever, insert current breaking news. They go, well, it's a really interesting question. I was coaching a woman who was mm -hmm. in my seminar and she's a woman who had three children and she had just been divorced, lost her job. And everybody's like titillated, right? You got a woman who has three kids and is desperate and you're going to listen to what happens next. You don't even, you didn't even hear that they said seminar, but you're registering that they're teaching a seminar. So at the end, you're going to be like, oh, you know, I really liked that story that that person told about that woman and that breakthrough that woman had. I'm going to check them out and maybe do their seminar too. Right? So storytelling, that's your secret on that one. Okay. So I see everybody's notes. So, uh, Hannah, like you did last time, you guys, uh, you can cut and paste this. Um, when you go over here, you're going to see three little dots and you can download the chat. I have a Hannah, so Hannah's going to do it for me, but everybody else, you can now download the chat so that you can get to know each other. The other question is, is should we do this again? Was this, uh, I want to do it again in July, like July 1st through July 21st, and we'll just do the whole 21 day challenge again. What was the most valuable thing though? Just give, we've only got a few minutes left. I want to hear from you what was actually valuable so we can do more of that. What made a difference the past 21 days? You know what, actually just throw it in the chat so everybody gets a chance to speak. Um, what, uh, what, what made a difference for you that I can add, you know, so maybe it was the breakout sessions. Maybe you mm. hated the breakout sessions. <laughs> maybe you want more of lecture and less of the chit chat because you know, me and Mark talking all the time, you're like, shut up. Or maybe you loved it. I don't know. So just tell me what, okay, people like the breakout sessions. Okay, what else? So Hannah, let's see, let's take a look at the dates. There is July 4th and I need a break y'all. Okay. I oh, haven't yeah. had a break in a while. I'm tired and I would like to get out and be on my mountain bike for a little bit. So we're going to take a break over the July 4th and I think we'll uh, gear up on the 10th, the 17th and the 24th at 1 PM Eastern. Nice. And then the best way to prep is to do the book and just watch my blog. Those are the easiest ones. Oh, okay. you all did like, yeah, the breakout sessions are fun, how huh? we get to connect with everybody and just kind yeah. of workshop what we're doing. Good. Any final words before we leave until July? I, I have a question, Michelle. Yes, Janet. When you, um, when you follow up, when you send a pitch to say, um, I, I, have, I have a story idea about how to navigate through difficult COVID conversations. Someone oh, wants to shake a hand, you don't want to shake their hand. So to, can I only send it to one media outlet at a time? No. I can now, if you to, want an exclusive and you can do, um, you know, that's somebody shared with that. I can't even remember who shared that now. I don't see, I think she logged off. Um, if you want an exclusive, like with the New York times and it really is a scoop for them, then you do that. Right. But otherwise just pitch as many people as you want. They know you're pitching more, but use a personalized approach. If you're going to okay. just be like, look, I just want the information to get out there and they can cut and paste it then send a press release. So if, if you're, if you're submitting a, um, an op-ed piece, would now that, that be, that's, yeah, that's different? only one at a time. Okay. All right. This is a okay. faux pas. If you do a, an op-ed for the New York times and then the Washington post and the Hill and the wall street journal and two of the editors then want it, you're in a, you're in trouble. Okay. 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 That'll okay. forever burn your relationship with them. If you go, Oh, I'm sorry, but I gave it to the wall street journal, not you. And they're like, you should have just sent that one at a time. Okay, thank you. Lose my, num lose my number. <laughs> yeah, let me yeah. before, we're gonna go just a, about four minutes over because I wanna check the questions that, I wanna make sure that I answered everything. I got a question. For, for, our, for our people. Yes, I, uh, yes, Mr. Um, Winker. In our breakout session, we questioned uh, people's meaning about using the word story. Uh, in our breakout session, there was an author and she said, her feeling about the meaning of story is something fiction. In our book, we have uh, 18 short stories, as we call them, by 16 different authors that tell the wildflower story, that talk about climate change. So how do we use the word story, given that some people may think that story is a fiction writing? Put the, word true, put the word true in front of it. A couple of suggestions that we got were creative nonfiction or short nonfiction stories. True. Okay. 
Uh, so let me just, let me just add, so first of all, uh, if you if you tell story to a fiction writer, their context is fiction story. If you say story to a journalist, their context is an article or a segment or a story idea on their on their. It's just it's who's listening. Okay, thank, thank you, you for clarifying that. Yeah, so they they love a they love a story idea. Like they if you get. I have one national TV producer who's mad that I don't pitch her every day. They're huh. hungry for the scoop. Okay, let me answer a few of these questions because Janet, you had a question about the questions ahead. Um, depends on the, so she wanted to know like, is it okay to send questions ahead? There's a, in one of the, I think it's the first call we did, I actually showed okay. some of, like on our, on searchpresskids.com, you can actually see new, uh, interview questions to ask. The, sh the short answer to that is, if it's NPR, they're gonna be highly insulted that you okay. send questions ahead because they're a serious journalist. How dare you send questions ahead? Okay. But if they're a smaller venue and they're more of a soloist host of some sort, they're gonna be like, oh great, what do okay. you want me to ask you? Sure, okay. send those questions. I may or may not ask them. Okay. It's gonna be conversational, but sure, I'll entertain what you send. Okay. If you send white papers and supports, just keep it tight. Don't don't send a dissertation. They, I've been yelled at for sending a four minute clip, TV clip. Oh, okay. Right. They're like, you, they say to me because I'm a publicist. You do your job of summarizing it in two sentences for me, and I'm not going to watch this. You do okay. your job. That's what they okay. say to me. Okay. And then this other question series of questions really is answered in the whole series. But I'm just going to highlight them because Victoria uh, sent those in advance. I don't know. Victoria is probably like, oh, my God, please answer these. I'm not going to be on the call. So for her, how does one get pitched and get a, on a major publication like Forbes, Entrepreneur, and Business Insider? Follow the steps that we have here. You pitch them. And Business Insider, by the way, uses pitch rate and help a reporter out and source bottle. So if you really want Business Insider, just get on those free media lead services and pitch mm -hmm. them. And say, I'm an expert. Uh, national TV features, you've got to just get in relationship with that national TV producer and just give them something, the right information at the right time, and then you're on TV. Uh, the most affordable wire, hey, Anna, what is the wire service that we use, the cheapest one? I think it's 24-7. Uh, yeah, it's 24-7 press release, I believe. There are all kinds of press release services yes. out there, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, the most expensive being like PR Sweet. Newswire and Business Wire. You want to just look to see, just do a Google search on the wire service you're thinking about and see how it shows up and see if you like that. If you don't like the way they're showing up, then use somebody else. And the best PR companies offer results. And the best thing to ask a PR company, if you're thinking about hiring a PR company, what did you place last week? Not last year, not last decade, okay, <laughs> last week. And if they go, oh, well, it's a pandemic and we haven't gotten any results, hang up the phone. We produce BBC, Daily Mail. Uh, I mean, uh, there's so many, Thrive Global, there's so many results from our team, I can't even remember them, right? That's what you want to hear, that the publicist is so overwhelmed. She's like, hold on, I got to get the list. That's what you want, okay? <laughs> Just to name drop. And so, I, you got a good name I'm drop? not sure I understood when, when you're going to do this again. The, right oh, the next call for us, because you're going to have a break and you're going to enjoy your July 4th, okay? Uh, July 10th. And then the 17th and the 24th, we will huddle again and have fun. <laughs> Somebody wants to know if you can restore your reputation always okay it's just a matter of choosing some search terms that you want to be associated with and then dominating those search terms we'll, we can talk about that uh yeah that it's that it's just uh a search engine optimization okay so i'm getting some private questions so that's uh, you're just getting some articles out there that because it's always a he said she said on the internet okay We've gone way over, but that's okay. Anybody has a burning before we complete? Thank you. Yes, Nita? Quick question. Um, we're putting together your questionnaire because we're going to work with you and we're very excited. Oh, yay. 
And um, you said something about copyright of articles. We have a number of articles that have come out about our traveling exhibit. Can, to be able to put them in press kit, in the media kit, do we have to get if you uh, if you wrote them and you own the copyright, then don't worry about them. If you no, we didn't. Them, they were written about us. No, that we want to put those in media coverage about you, but we don't want to represent them as you own the copyright to those. Okay, so Same copyrights photo. only if we wrote it. We have to deal with Correct. the copyright. Okay, Correct. I, that's why I was confused. And if we do reference a clip that's been written about you, then we always want to give credit to that writer or that press venue so oh, sure. that they get the advertising dollars of that traffic. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, for the copyright information, please go see a lawyer. Right, Mark? How was that? Yeah, Excellent. That was good. Excellent. <laughs> Lest I get a note in the future saying, Michelle, bad man. I'm, send, I'm sending everybody a bill for $250. Perfect. Yeah, what is it with you guys? You're so expensive. You're as, as, you're as expensive as publicists are. Jesus. <laughs> you guys get paid. So do you. Ah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, have a great July 4th. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful.